All right. It's good to be back. Woo! We're back. We're, we're on, and you're with us. Hey, Johnny. Hello. Hello, everybody out there. You're here for the Mega64 podcast. Oh, wrong podcast. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. <laughs> Bitch. Shit. Fuck. That's awesome. Getting all the trash out. Ah, uh, we're back. It's good to be back. It's been a while. How you feeling, Johnny? Pretty good. Uh, it's uh, autumn, I guess, on the set now. It's like nice. It's like a twilight. You're here with us, the faithful viewer, or maybe you're listening to us on Spotify, in which case that makes you... The faithful listener, you're here with the Mega Strange Podcast, there we go. and we are your hosts. I am your favorite paranormal investigator, oh. journalist, and researcher, Derek Acosta, along with my co-host here. Also your favorite. Also a formidable paranormal researcher, oh. journalist, and badass editor, Johnny Weiss. I'm also a... Writer, director, famous internet celebrity. I know we're busting out our IMDb credits. We are. And uh, pretty soon I'm going to enter into the world of comic books as well. Oh. Uh, well I'm happy to uh, announce for the first time ever, ever announced anywhere on the internet. I'm going to break the news today. I have a new creative project. Oh, shit. That I've secretly been working on for months for a good part of the past year. And uh, it's going to be coming out soon in just the next few weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for Phobia. It is a horror anthology comic book. We're going to get the photo of the cover of issue one up on screen. Check that out. Johnny. Yes. I'll show you here in person. Oh, there's, shit. There's the cover of my new horror comic book, Phobia, created by Derek Acosta. That's sick. Uh, you. You, should, uh, you guys should put the, the logo on a shirt. What is it with you putting <laughs> everything on a shirt? I like Every, merchandising. Everywhere, everywhere I go around Mega 64, the conversation is always, hey, what can we put on a shirt? Let's live our lives a little bit. Let's uh, stretch our intellectual muscles beyond fashion. I bet everyone in the comments is going to be like, yo, I want the logo on a shirt. Fashion. Fashion. Well, I hope, uh, you know, right now we're not doing this. It's a comic book. It already is merchandise. Mm -hmm. You could the, the the product already exists. That's true. You'll be able to check that out for free. Uh, oh, it's free. It's not out yet, but oh. it will be available for free. And uh, more news will be coming in the next few weeks with the debut. But stay tuned for more information about Phobia Hell the yeah. Anthology. I'm really excited about it. That's awesome. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it more on a future episode. But it's a project that I developed back in 2014. And it wow. was shelved for a long time. And here we are, seven, almost eight years later, and it's finally coming out. And I'm really excited. Yeah, that's cool. You know, everyone out there probably has a similar project that they've just been toiling away for years. Uh, it's cool to have, like, to see you go from, like, the beginning stages to finished product. Like, I, I don't think I've ever been able to complete anything. So that's that's really cool to see. Um, you go through You've that process. You've completed stuff. I mean, like personal I've seen projects. Your television pilot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've seen it. You've completed stuff. Yeah. I've seen your uh, thesis film <laughs> from SVA. That was barely finished. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, well, you know, with this comic book with phobia, it was something that I was really into. I think anybody who watches the Mega sixty four podcast, the other podcast that I host, they may remember a few years ago when I really got into underground comics, especially mm. from like the late 60s all through the 70s into the early 80s. And they don't make comics like that anymore. And so I became a collector of that era, which kind of bit me in the ass. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. This is going to be, we're not even into the bulk of what today's episode is. By the way, we're going to be discussing the mystery of Easter Island. The most, one of the most mysterious islands on earth. You've always heard about yeah, Easter yeah. Island. You know there's a mystery with those big statues. You probably don't know anything about it. We're going to give you the full rundown top to bottom. Dude, fuck yeah. By the end of today's episode, you're going to be an expert on the mystery of Easter Island. And it involves cannibals, birdman cults, uh, statues that magically walk. <laughs> and you probably don't know this, but Easter Island is one of the most, the most remote locations on earth. Okay. Which just adds to the mystery. We'll get into it. It's over a thousand miles away from its closest neighbor. 
Think about that. That's cool. But okay, comic books. Comics. When you go into a comic book store, there's already this attitude, this yeah. snobbiness. Of, Stop that fucking comic book store attitude, bro. Do you have? Uh, I'm I'm guessing that if you've ever been to a comic book store, you've had an experience, probably several experiences, yeah, where the people at the comic book store just made you feel dumb. I'll never forget. Can I share one? Please. When Let's I was a kid, we're going to blast. The yeah. Comic book fuck this guy. <laughs> uh, I wish I could remember the name of the fucking comic shop. Zap Comics. If you're in New Jersey, go to Zap Comics. Shout uh, out to Zap Comics. But this one guy who used yeah, to this, work there. I, he, I think he owns the store. Will, uh, well, I was going to say. Will yeah. remain under <laughs> don't 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 talk. To, I don't know. It, it, that, it might not ah, exist yeah. anymore. Former owner. Former uh, owner. Yeah. When I, when, I, when I was a kid, I was really into Invader Zim. And uh, nice. Nobody can relate to that. Yeah, actually. you're the only one. Crazy. And I got really into like, well, it was early internet. I I had a computer, but it was like you know, not I didn't have a modem. I was still dial up. I was able to Google. What it. year is this? You still had dial up in 2005? Come on, bro. You had to I have think cable. So. By that. No, no. I guess I had the modem. Yeah, you're right. You had to have cable. My friend, that. my friend had a uh, dial up still, and I always remember we'd go to his house and like Newgrounds would take like. A year to fucking load. You're like, I just want to play Pico before <laughs> I have to go home for dinner. But uh, I was able to Google. I had a short amount of time. I was a lot on the internet. I was able to Google like who created the show. Jonan Vasquez. I learned he had a bunch of comics. Mm. And uh, I, I, had, I was going to art class at the time. And uh, all the older kids would talk about Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. I was like, oh, oh, I want to read that. You had to get your hands on a yeah. JTHM issue. So I went to Zap Comics when it was like in the mall still at my local mall. Okay. And I had the, I had the copy. And my mom was like, "Get the copy of what? Of uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac? Oh, the, the, issue one? No, the the, the full trade? the trade. Okay. And I was like, "Mom, can I buy this?" And she's like, "Okay." And then like I take it to the front, and the owner's like, "Um, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, this is actually a little adult for him." And I was like, "You motherfucker, you fucking dick!" <laughs> like, and mom was like, "Oh, really?" And then he goes, he fully explains who Jonan is. Uh, how I shouldn't watch Invader Zim, how I shouldn't read his comics. What? I was like, what What's the this guy fuck? doing? That's what I was saying. I think he got in trouble for something like prior with, with this. And uh, he kept telling me like, oh, Invader Zim's going to get canceled because it's on it like f Fridays at 8 p.m. No one watches it. And I was like, fuck this guy. Oh, he's just a hater. Yeah, he's a fucking hater. Uh, I had to, uh, my mom and dad are divorced, but when I hung out with my dad that next week, uh, we went to uh, another comic shop that's not, doesn't exist anymore called MC Comics. Uh, they sold it to me, so shouts out. Ah, oh, uh, and now they're gone. <laughs> that's How probably why that they happen? went under. Um, I don't know. I think it was just in a, it was in the middle of nowhere. It was kind of cool, just like in the middle of nowhere in New Jersey, like in, like, a, like a wooded area. There was that's just a little cool. comic that's shop. Cool. Well, that uh, is unfortunate. My story is basically I got into these comics, these underground comics with an X uh, yeah. from the 60s, 70s and 80s. And I would try to go hunting for them. And, and all the comic book stores I would go to, I would get a stern lecture about like, no, we don't carry those. Um, They actually don't make those Black. anymore. And uh, a lot of those are uh, <laughs> inappropriate for kids. And it's like, well, I'm fucking in my 30s. <laughs> And uh, these comics came out decades ago. They're collectors. I, yeah. I mean, I'm going to a comic book store looking for collectors item, and I was just getting like attitude. I'm like, yeah, you're stupid. And then people would recommend different comics. Like, yeah, you should check out IDW. You should check out uh, Image Comics. You should check out Dark Horse. They would just recommend like the more independent comic books publishers from today. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Yeah, I'm aware of those. Not what I'm looking yeah. for, but thank you. They're also like, those are huge publishers. They're huge. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, but that being said, yeah, I was going through this whole phase in my life where I was obsessed with these comics and I was kind of uh, really enamored with the horror comics of that era. And I really wanted to like recreate them or create my own, which who out there doesn't f feel that way? You get yeah. really into something and you're like, I want to I want to do this myself. <laughs> right. It's a fantasy. Always. It's a fool's journey. Right. Yeah. I watch wrestling and I'm like, I could be a pro wrestler. People watch the Olympics. They're like, I could have been a gold medalist. Well, I was reading these <laughs> comics being like, Man, I, I could have written something like this. So I tried it mm. and uh, I had some artist friends and truthfully, it was just kind of sometimes you work on a project and everybody has good intentions, but for whatever reason, just doesn't work out. Scheduling conflicts or even more so, which is sad to say, and I hate to admit this, but sometimes there's just a creative breakdown. There's just a, cr a breakdown in the creativity yeah. uh, in the working relationship. Like two people will want to, two or three people or a group of people will want to create something and just 
friction along the way and it just becomes kind of like a chore. And then somewhere along the way, it just kind of gets shelved and abandoned. Yeah. That's what happened to this project. And I kept all my files. I kept all my writings because I really loved them. Never knowing what would happen. And then randomly, seven years later, I got the opportunity. Somebody's like, do you have any ideas for comics? And I kind of pitched these ones uh, on a lark. Like, yeah, I've been sitting on these forever. And uh, the team like lit up. They're like, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Anyways, Phobia, it's coming out soon. <clears throat> you, you, sorry. Uh, on with today's episode. Oh, never mind. What were you going to say? I was gonna say? Do you know what like website it's going to be on or is it going to be on, on its own website? It will be on the um, websites that people use to get their comics okay. on the internet. We are uh, looking at multiple platforms and truthfully, we're going to um, submit it to some comic book publishers. Okay. Now we'll see what happens. Some of these comic book publishers have accepted projects that are, you know, pretty low caliber. Let's <laughs> just say, not, not sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm spraying it. No, I'm saying, no, it. <laughs> I'm, you know, what's the nice way to say you don't have to be the greatest artist in yeah. the world. You don't have to be the greatest writer in the world to get your book published by a, by a pretty big publisher. And so we're going to submit. Um, but I'm always, a, I like to say a realist. Mm. Maybe I'm a little bit of a pessimist. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm just this guy from YouTube. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they're not going to want my comics. So we're going to submit it, but we're also going to put it online so that people can find it. And honestly, maybe if there's enough support um, from people like the viewers of this show, if there's enough of a fan base on the free version that's available online. Yeah. That will kind of inspire or motivate these publishers to okay. be like, hey, you know, maybe there's something to this little horror comic. Maybe we do want to distribute this. That's cool. So there will be more information when it's available yeah. because it's kind of going to be all over the place. So follow you on Twitter for updates. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram yes. uh, and all social media. We always promote our social yeah, media. Yeah. We don't just do Mega Strange here. We got all kinds of projects in the work. In fact, I can't get into it, but I got, I got a whole handful of pet projects and passion projects that I am waiting to debut to the world. Hell yeah. Pretty much every interest that I have on a personal level, I'm, I'm developing some sort of creative project for it. You're like a shark tank. I'm like Derek the, tank. the nerdy shark tank. <laughs> Starting with this show, which we are going to get to today. Yeah. This show itself. Um, you know, I love ghosts. You do as well. We both, like uh, aliens. we bonded over our, our, Interest in paranormal, just weird shit, I yeah. think is, is safe to say. Weird shit, hell yeah. And so we started a show about it, and here we are doing it. Thousands of viewers weekly tuning in to see what freaky news we're going to be sharing. Viewers from all over the world. Um, and in fact, we like to uh, hear from our viewers every once in a while, and you can email us. What's the email that they can uh, contact we, us We at? do not have an email, but I can set one up. We don't have an email? No. Tweet at us. Tweet at us, Tweet yeah. at us. Um, your questions, comments, concerns, or tips. Oh yeah. I have a bunch of, I tweeted out, um, you know, if people had questions for us. So maybe later in the show, we could answer some of those. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Easter. Island. Or, uh, more likely is we're going to resurrect our mailbag. Oh yeah. And answer those questions oh, in our mailbag. Episode, okay. Which will be coming out, um, uh, during the weekday. Hell yeah. People remember our mailbag episode. All right. Well, Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we're about 21 minutes into the show so yeah. far, and we haven't even touched <laughs> our topic for today. It's a good Saturday or Sunday or whatever day you're watching this show on. We hope you're enjoying your day. Listen, this is what I want to say. You ever, you ever heard about somebody being lost at sea? You ever watched a show where somebody's yeah. lost at sea? I'm always fascinated when people are lost. Terrifying. At sea. It is terrifying. I told you that was my biggest fear. Yeah? Yeah. Like... You're on a boat and it goes down and you're the lone survivor. Yeah. In the middle of the ocean. Fuck that. That's so scary. Luckily, that would never happen. But if you mm. were like flying to Japan, uh, the plane might go down. I'm, yeah. I'm never going to be in the middle of the ocean unless it's on a plane. Yeah. By the Same. way, uh, when I flew home from Japan, about three hours into the flight, they started telling us like we're going to hit really bad turbulence no. because there's a huge storm coming and uh, flight control tells us that we have to hurry up and get through it now or they're not going to let us go through oh it. Oh my God. We have like a 20 minute window to get through it. And it was the most turbulent, like literally 
I'm flying over the Pacific Ocean. It's like pitch black outside. It's like three in the morning. And they're telling us like flight controls telling us we're the last plane authorized to go into this storm. And I'm like, this is how it ends, man. That is how it this ends. Is how <laughs> it all goes down for the old D-man. Maybe the plane would go down and I just survive. Castaway style. That seems nice. If you're on an island, that seems cool. Yeah. I mean, just, the plane goes to the water, floods the plane. You got to get your seatbelt off. Yeah. You get your seatbelt off. There's water all around your feet. You're in an airplane. It's filling up with water. You got to, like, break that door open. <laughs> well, first you got to survive the fucking cr- the crash landing into the ocean. I'm assuming that that hap- that's a passive thing because mm. you don't do anything to survive. You either survive or you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you basically just keep going. <laughs> like, fuck, dude, I survived. You got to keep surviving. That fucked me up when I watched an episode of Mythbusters and they said like hitting uh, water at a certain speed is like the equivalent of hitting concrete at the same speed. Like it's like, you know, in your head you have this idea of like, oh, if I land in the water, I'll be fine. It's like, no, yeah. you still hit with a certain force. Well, to that, uh, on that note, they say that if you're approaching water and it's like just still water, that is going to be like a, the impact of cement basically Mm. but if you could break the surface tension yeah it will lessen the blow so if you accidentally fall off of a bridge and you're falling towards the water below yeah and you're thinking oh my god i'm gonna die no 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 no, no. what you do is you have to in midair and you only have like two seconds to do this so practice this in your mind yeah you have to take your shoes off oh and you have to wing them back like this if you're listening to the audio version i have imaginary shoes held back (laughs) behind my head yeah and then vroom fling them down as hard as you can really oh shit you need your shoes to rock it down below you and hit the water below you yeah before you do oh my god to break the surface tension to make a little window of broken surface tension so that you can hit that water but you're not hitting that concrete water you're hitting that nice smooth bubbly refreshing crash pad water <laughs> i feel like that would take it would be like immediately like i know you're like derek <laughs> you're making this up you're no, doing no. a comedy bit no i, yeah, I can see it that sounds being funny but it'll save your life you want to break that surface tension if possible probably not possible but if possible go for it that's what i say also go for the win if you drive off a bridge if you have the elect- water, uh, the the front of the car breaks the surface tension for yeah. you. And uh, if you if you have electric uh, windows, you're fucked because they they just short out. They say the crank wheels work. You're to supposed get out. to keep a, a glass breaker in your car. Yeah, to break the windows. We, we, dude, we've gotten off the rails on this episode. <laughs> That's badass. I want to. I keep a glass breaker in. Really? My car. Yeah. That's cool. I, I uh, do I have my keys on me? Are there, it's on my keys. Okay. I don't have. My I've keys seen on you. Me. I've seen your glass breaker. That's cool. Yeah. Like, I'm getting out. I'm getting out of that lake. I'm getting out of that plane when the plane goes down in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Anyways, point being, I've, you know, heard these stories of people who are lost in the Pacific Ocean. They're yeah. out there for like 300 days sometimes and they still live because the Pacific Ocean is huge. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Essentially, we're it's the, the roundabout beginning. here. <laughs> It's just a long way of saying the Pacific Ocean is really, really big. Yeah. It's the biggest ocean on Earth, but it's big. Like. It's big. It's, I, I just want to convey to everybody out there how massive it is. Oh, yeah. I saw a video of like just the world's oceans and like the depths it goes to. And it was like the uh, the deepest ocean. It, they put like the Statue of Liberty as a size comparison. It was like this big. It was like really tiny. And the ocean was like, you know, massive. Yeah, it's deep too. Yeah. And uh, it's deep. There's a lot underwater. But even on the surface, it's wide. It goes out forever. And there's islands out there in mm. the Pacific Ocean um, that nobody's ever discovered. There's islands out there that nobody's ever seen. Okay. And there's also what are known as phantom islands, which are islands that people claim to have seen, but have never officially been discovered. What? What? Sorry, I almost had to bite my tongue. People always get in the comments get really mad when I say blanks is a great band name, but Phantom Islands, dude. Phantom that's, Islands. That's great. It is a great band name. Yeah. Well, let me talk to you about one such Phantom Island. Okay. Because it was sighted in the year 1687. 
in the year 1687. This was the year, the time of high adventure on the high seas. Johnny's thinking like Cheech and Chong high. No, I'm talking <laughs> about Jack Sparrow high. Oh, yeah, Whole he was different pretty high. Kind of high. Yeah, drunk. And uh, there was actually a pirate in 1687 by the name of Edward Davis. I love pirate names, by the way, because they're exceedingly normal. Yeah. It's always like, uh, they always sound like a football player for the New England Patriots. <laughs> Edward Davis. Running back Edward Davis. <laughs> uh, Edward awesome. Davis was a pirate, and he was carrying out raids on um, all these Spanish settlements, mm. Mexico, Peru, Chile. And uh, he was sailing through the Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean away from the Galapagos Islands when he saw what he claims was a low, sandy island in the distance with hills extending to the northeast. But he didn't make any attempt to investigate the island because he was in the middle of like gold raids. And he's like, I got better shit to do, but cool. New yeah. island over there. Um, at the time when he said that he discovered this island, 1687, uh, there was like a gold rush in South America. People were obsessed with all the gold they were finding. And they thought that this island might have a lot of gold on it, too. So this island became a legendary phantom island known as Davis Island. Okay. The island that Edward Davis claims to have seen. And people for decades would search the Pacific Ocean looking for Davis Island. By the way, to this day, Davis Island has never been found. Oh, that's, that's cool. Davis Island has never been found. But lots of people have died on voyages searching for Davis Island. Searching for this legendary phantom island. Such a silly name for, for an island people died trying yeah. to find. He died looking for Davis Island. <laughs> he uh, he found Ricky Island and, and Billy Island, but he couldn't find Davis. B Billy Island. Billy Island. My favorite pop star. <laughs> well, on um, April 5th, 1722, uh -huh. a Dutch explorer named Jacob Rogeveen was sailing the Pacific Ocean looking for Davis Island. Mm -hmm. Oh, he found an island, all right. But it wasn't Davis Island. It was an island uh, that had never, you know, it wasn't where Davis Island was supposed to have been. So it was a new island. And because it was April 5th, Easter, oh, he named the island Easter Island. I never knew that's where that name came from. It was discovered on Easter. That's cool. 1722. I assume there was indigenous people, so the, the idea of naming after Easter is kind of funny. Like, yo. Christ Have y'all heard of Christ? <laughs> yeah, you heard of Christ, dude? Because uh, I'm naming this island yeah. after him. Get your little statues out of here. <laughs> Get your little, <laughs> your little statue. That's a big fucking statue. Yeah. Get your little big fucking statue out of here. <laughs> start, start hanging some crosses. You know, yeah. Johnny, you're not too far off oh, fuck, yes. from what actually happened. Oh, because no. according to the records of that day, Easter Day, 1722, the first contact with uh, Europeans and the indigenous people of Easter Island resulted in, mm, let me check the notes here, the death of about a dozen islanders. Oh, no. Um, including one of their chiefs. And the wounding of many others. And that's all that is said about that first day. That yeah. is in 1722. So basically they went there. They shot a bunch of the locals. They're like, yeah, all right, we did. We do what we came to do. Let's go. Oh, my God. And they left. And um, it wouldn't be until about 50 years later that another European would return. Okay. Which I find interesting that the yeah. Dutch just show up on this island one day in 1722, shoot 12 people, shoot about 30 people, whatever. And they're like, fuck this. Let's get out of here. And then for 50 years, the Islanders are just like, that was a crazy day. Yeah, it's a fucking... That's a crazy ass did day. like a mass sh island shooting. That's fucked up, yeah. dude. The next foreign visitors arrived on November 15th, 1770, actually 48 years later. And they were two Spanish ships called the San Lorenzo and the Santa Rosalia. And it was these Spaniards that recorded that the island was covered in standing statues. They were the first oh. to report the statues. Um, I'm sure that the statues were there when the Dutch arrived. They just didn't seem to mention it. Yeah. But 50 years later, the Spaniards were like, there's a lot of statues here. 
um, of which there are about a thousand. Wow, I didn't know there were that many. None of them are standing to this day. Oh. All 1,000. There are like 938. All of them have been toppled. Oh, no. There's an asterisk there. There's like maybe 12. We'll get to it. But, mm-hmm. but they're, they've all been pushed over. In 1786, 16 years after that, a French expedition went to Easter Island. They were the first expedition to circle the island on their boat okay. and make a map of it and draw up a picture of the bay. Three visits over the course of almost 75 years. I just find that interesting. Yeah, you know, it yeah. takes Back then, it took so long to find information. You'd go there for a day, and then you'd tell legends of that island for 50 years it'd be before another person would go find it again. That's like the age of adventure to me. You yeah. grow, 50 years means you could grow up your whole life hearing a story about this island, Easter Island, this one time these people went there, and then you're the person who sets out to find it. Yeah, that's like that always creeps me out. Like the idea of like uh, just how slow uh, information traveled then. It's like you didn't know someone died probably for like a full year. Yeah, like that's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Um, when George Washington died, I think we did a story. Yeah, it yeah. Took like five years for Dude, people all over the country to know about it. That's baffling. There's no internet back then. There's yeah, no text yeah. messages. There's no TMZ. You want to believe what happened to George Washington today? Oh, our photographers caught him dead as a doornail. It's was that a good TMZ? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched that show. Were you gonna say something? Oh, I was just gonna say like I feel like things always change. Like I feel like in the '90s, people would be like, "How was your day?" Now it's like I've been texting you all day. I know how your day is. Like we, you know, little, little boomer Johnny coming out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we all got a vent about people who ask us how our days been. yeah yeah anyway. i've been texting you all day you know how my day has yeah been. i know how your day is i'm not gonna ask um in 1860 slavers came to the island oh no took about 1500 people off of the island okay um uh, Basically, around this time, 94% of the island's indigenous uh, population was decimated, either by being abducted and forced into slavery, or some of the slaves were allowed to return to the island, but they came back with disease like smallpox and tuberculosis. And so Easter Island, the society uh, that had grown there, Mm. collapsed pretty quickly. Okay. After the 1860s, that was pretty much the... Uh, I mean, they're still there to this day, actually. They have come back, but for a while there, the population was almost annihilated. Um, and for a while, they were reduced to about one, between one and three percent of their original numbers. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Easter Island is one of the most remote places on Earth. It is 1,150 miles away from its closest neighbor. By the way, that is about the distance from San Diego to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Wow. But that's about 1,200 miles. Yeah, yeah. That's our, your closest neighbor is California to Louisiana. <laughs> Just to put that in perspective of how far away. That's your closest neighbor. That's in any direction. There's nothing. Take that distance from California to Louisiana. Do a big diameter circle on the map around it. That's, and fill that with nothingness. That's what it's like when you're on Easter Island. Okay. That's how far away from everything you are. So how did people get to Easter Island? Nobody knows. That is true. Nobody knows. Because the people, it was an oral history, yeah. and the people were wiped out. They were decimated by slavers and disease. Um, but what the, what the legend says is that it was originally a two-man canoe expedition of uh, people from the Maori mm. tribe, those people, uh, the Polynesians. Okay. Uh, the same people who settled Hawaii and New Zealand. Okay. Um, it says that the island was first scouted by these two men. One of them had dreamed the island existed and they thought it would be a worthwhile place to flee to. I don't have information about where these men came from, but it says that they had been 
at war with a neighboring chief and a neighboring tribe, and they had lost three battles to this tribe, and so they needed a place to flee to, and this chief dreamed of a faraway country, and so he took one scout with him in a canoe and sailed to the most remote island on Earth, Easter Island. Um, It is said that when they arrived, the island only had one settler on it, Um, and after a brief stay with that settler, the rest of the tribe arrived to form a colony on Easter Island, and within one generation, they had started creating the uh, Moai statues, the statues that you've seen, within one generation. Um, which I just think is interesting. Nobody knows, obviously, if this story is true because it's just an oral history, but they say it's just two people on a canoe discovered Easter Island. Scientists, um, they did do some carbon dating, and they found out that the first inhabitants of the island came sometime between the year 300 and 1200. Mm -hmm. Current era. Current era. So that's like after the fall of Rome. So when Rome fell Uh in the year... 500 or whatever, Easter Island was still empty. E- everything that's happened on Easter Island has happened within the last, like, thousand years. Most of it's happened within the last 500 years. That's crazy. Check this out. Speaking of 500 years ago, this is what was happening on Easter Island 500 years ago in the 15th century. Okay. Full society collapsed. Oh, no. They arrived there. Let's say they arrived in the year 800 because nobody really knows. And for 700 years, they had this whole culture, tribes, They were building statues. By the way, these statues are said to be their actual ancestors, like the leaders of their tribe. When when the leader of the tribe dies, they make a statue and they name the statue after that leader. And then they put his soul into the statue and the statue retains the spiritual power of the leader. And they're actually in there. Their their spirit is in there. Oh, yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah, like, I, I mean, my whole life, I always heard, like, rumors of, like, alien shit, but, like, also that, like, the heads have bodies that are underground or something. I don't know if you're going to get into that. Yes. Okay. People think that the Easter Island statues are just heads, but yeah. that's because the heads are so disproportionate to the rest of the body, but it's actually a head, shoulder, hands, arms, waist, loincloth, yeah. and one of them even depicts legs. Most of them stop at the waist, but one of them is a kneeling statue depicts legs. Okay. They were all toppled, uh, and I'm going I'm to get into that, but a few of them were not toppled okay. because they were buried up to their shoulders, probably in an attempt to stop them from being pushed over. Mm. The 15th century, the island had full society, and it had actually split off into two tribes, the northern tribe and the eastern tribe. And uh, they had royals, royal families, priests, nobles. Um, but they basically, after the, uh, it says for whatever reason, after that first visit from the Dutch, within two years of that first European contact, the two tribes started fighting with each other. They lived in peace up until that point, but they started fighting with each other. And they started fighting for control over the island. And the fighting continued all the way up into the 1860s when the slave traders arrived and started abducting people from the island. The leaders were abducted and turned into slaves. So the people who were left had no leaders. Okay. Because they were at war with each other, they started burning each other's huts and destroying the crops. You're on an island. Yeah, yeah. You're 1,500 miles away from your nearest neighbor. You destroyed the crops on the island. A famine hit the island. Um, after this, uh, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be an episode of Big Strange unless <laughs> I got a phone call. The the groups actually started toppling the statues themselves. The okay. two warring groups to destroy the opposing team's spiritual power. They toppled their own statues. Um, and it's even said that. Uh, as social control vanished, the order of the way of life gave way to lawlessness and roaming bands of predatory warriors started running the island. Roaming bands of predatory warriors. Homelessness prevailed with many people living underground. Okay. And underground? Yeah, living the underground. Fuck? This all happened on Easter Island. Um, And it said that these slavers captured the nobles 
of the tribes. And these nobles were the people who held the oral history, who held all the traditions. Mm. And they were... Here's something that's really crazy. Talking about the mysteries of Easter Island, this group of people um, had their own language, written language, called Rongo Rongo. Okay. Nobody to this day can read or decipher Rongo Rongo because the last people who were able to read it died in the 1860s. The nobles of the tribes who were abductive and forced into slavery were the last people capable of deciphering Rongo Rongo. What's interesting about uh-huh. Rongo Rongo, what uh, language linguists, language scientists and scholars say about it is they don't know because they can't read it, but if this is an actual language, like a written language, it would be one of the only instances in the history of mankind where a language was developed totally independently of anybody else's influence. Yeah. Which is to say that they made it up on this island. Most languages are made up across many cultures and are influenced by your neighboring cultures. This one would have been developed independently, which is also the reason why they have no possible chance in hell of ever deciphering it because they have nothing to compare it to. Yeah, because like, you know, like certain like English has roots in Latin, like you could easily figure out like what certain words mean. Yes, uh, but, but yeah. or if everybody in the world who spoke Spanish yeah. suddenly disappeared, you could take Spanish to somebody who spoke French, yeah. which is another Latin language, and kind of decipher it, yeah. kind of figure it out, maybe work it out a little bit. Rongo, Rongo, nothing. Nothing. It's just hieroglyphs on on the statues. I'm like, yeah, looks like a language. We don't know. They died. They all got wiped out. That's always sad to me when, you know, a whole culture gets... Yeah. Obviously, it's sad when a whole culture gets wiped out. Um... Here's where it gets crazy. So on Easter Island, right, they have this society. This group of people have been on this island for 700 years, and society starts collapsing. They turn on each other. By the way, the reason society collapsed, they say, is uh, they deforested the island. They used to, there's, uh, they used to have giant palm trees on Easter Island, scientists found out, in this this uh, palm tree is now extinct on Earth. They deforested the whole island. And they said, like, they introduced the Polynesian rat to the island. It came on one of their canoes. And the, the rat population over time just grew and grew and grew. And, you know, it, 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 it ate all the forest vegetation. And so they were just, like, running out of food. Yeah, and, I bet. And they cut down all the trees. And they're going to war with each other. And after 700 years, society is totally collapsing. They're even... They're even like knocking over the statues that they're famous for. So in like the year, I want to say like 1760. This is so wild to me. This only happened like 300 years ago. It's reported that the, the people of Easter Island abandoned their religion. They abandoned the worship of these statues and they invent something known as the Birdman Cult. The Birdman Cult. Okay. They say that basically like, by the way, remember I said that they put uh, the spirit of their leaders into the statues? Remember that? You know what they call that? Mana. Oh. Mana. Yo, you got the spirit of your leaders in this can. (laughs) Zoa, dude. Yeah. The concept of mana was invested into the statues. uh, And that the the mana would be used to channel energy from the spirit world and would be come come through the statues back into our world to deliver gifts to the tribes. Right? If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, they... Times got so bad, they were like, this, ain't, this shit ain't working. These statues aren't giving us shit. So they, they decided that the mana no longer came through the statues, but that the mana would be delivered to the tribes through a chosen leader known as the Birdman. And every year, they started this cult where every year they would hold a competition to find out who the new Birdman would be. Yeah. This competition is a fucking movie. This is so crazy. Do they go into a dream? The contestants for the competition are selected through a dream. 
Okay, because uh, Earthbound, there's a part where you're uh, you're in this area called Magicant. Yeah, and it's a dream world, and you fought, you meet Birdman. Really? Yeah, and but like I was like, oh shit, did he get that from this? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All the, <laughs> did I blow your mind for a second? You're like a little bit, you know? a little bit. All the men of importance on the island are eligible to enter into the Birdman competition, yeah. but they can only be selected if their name comes to a prophet in a dream. Mm. When you're selected to be in the competition as a noble, you actually select a representative or two. To do the competition for you, okay. which is so typical of rich people. The noble who is selected to be in the competition then gets an advocate to do the competition on their behalf. Okay. What the advocate has to do is climb down a cliff and swim to a neighboring island. And this neighboring island is considered a sacred place because it is so treacherous. It's like sheer rock walls thousand foot canyons, oh my God. shark infested <laughs> waters. And on this nearby Island, it's the seasonal, um, mating grounds of this bird known as, a uh, a type of stern. I'm not a big bird person. I guess it's no. a bird called a stern. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a special kind of type of bird. So the competition is they go there, they go to this treacherous Island and they, the first person to get the first egg of the season wins the competition. So the advocate will swim to this island. They'll pack like reeds full of supplies. They'll they'll wade with, the, with these supplies through the water. They'll get to the island and then they'll wait for the birds to come. And then they all scavenge the island looking for these birds. The advocate who finds the first bird egg will shout from one island to the other and he'll say to his noblemen like, I have the egg. Go shave your head. <laughs> the noble person. Actually, that message will be relayed to people on the beach who will relay it to people on the hill who will relay it all the way back up to the noble people who are waiting in town. And the noble person whose advocate called to him will go and shave his head. Okay. While that advocate takes the egg, puts it into a basket strapped to his forehead and swims back to the main island. By the way, once he gets to the main island, he has to climb a thousand foot cliff thousand feet what the fuck this is like princess bride yeah back to that city that that town that he just called to they said that advocates would be eaten by sharks oh i bet they would fall to their death but if your advocate died you would just send out a replacement they said that there was no shortage of people willing to be your advocate in the competition this is crazy it's like really lining up with earthbound because like you find Birdman, and if it Birdman dies, you just have to find another Birdman. You just send another one. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what they would do. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. The person who climbs the cliff presents the egg to his nobleman, who now has shaved his head and has painted his skin either red or white. This person takes the egg, and it's that nobleman who is declared the Birdman. Not the guy who found the egg. Not the guy who swam through shark infested no. water. Not the guy who climbed the thousand foot cliff. No, his boss <laughs> who took the egg and painted his face. He becomes the bird man. He takes his tribe. He leads them back to wherever he came from, right? It was either a northern tribe or an eastern tribe. So depending on which tribe you're from, you take the egg back to your tribe and you stay in a house. And for the next six months, you're not allowed to do anything except sleep and eat. Because you're the sacred bird man. Yeah, hell yeah. But your tribe gets dibs on all the eggs uh, for that season. Okay. And that is why people would do the bird man competition. Uh, and they would do it every year. Every and year? Damn. Every year. And uh, they have found little bird man glyphs, like little carvings all over the island. And they think it's like one glyph to represent every winner of the bird man competition. But they don't know. They don't know. That That's was, badass, that dude. That was the cult of the bird man. I love that it kind of uh, inspired parts of Earthbound. That's really cool. Yeah. That, the cult of the bird man, by the way, was founded about 300 years ago. And it only lasted about 150 years until, guess what? Catholic priests showed hey. up on the island and built a Catholic church <laughs> and converted everyone to Catholicism. And so the cult of Birdman Boo. went away. So that's uh, the mystery of Easter Island. And I know yes, 
There's a lot going on. It's kind of an open-ended story. It's a lot of little threads that just don't wrap up nicely, but I feel like it's the perfect storm of mystery, Easter mm. Island. The middle of nowhere, uh, legendary beginning. It all happened kind of recently, you know, within the last... It's not like this was 5,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah. This was like 300 years ago to 1,000 years ago. No aliens? No aliens, actually. Aliens have no... They don't, I, they don't factor into the Easter Island story whatsoever, which is surprising to me, too. Yeah. I also feel like there is a, a UFO connection to Easter Island. Why? Was there a cartoon or something in the 90s that portrayed the, the, the heads as being connected to aliens? Like, why do we I, both think I that? think it's Ancient Aliens, that show. They just show the, the Easter Island. Heads. Yeah, I think they for a while they just didn't know where the heads came from. But it sounds like they kind of figured it out. Yeah, by the way, um, just... How they made those heads? Yeah, uh, this is interesting to me, just as like a crafty person. Is they would just go to a rock wall and just start drawing a face, carving a face into the wall. Okay, and they just kept going, and they would chiseling, add, just yeah, chiseling it away and shaping it until eventually they would go all the way behind it, and uh, they were laying down when they would do it, and then they would raise them up. There's this big mystery of how uh, they would move them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientists still don't know how they moved them, but but the leading theory is they would attach ropes to the top and they would kind of rock them back and forth while people at the bottom would pull the pull the bottom forward and make them walk because mm. the legends always say that the statues walked. And supposedly they had one chant that the statue walkers would memorize and they would use this chant to synchronize their pulling because it had to be exact because these statues were so big and so heavy. I don't know the chance. Don't ask me to chant it. I don't. I don't. It's Not probably chant. like it's probably don't even do it. Don't like even. Uh, we will, we will rock you. <laughs> pull, pull, push. Pull, pull, push. If that's insensitive, I had no, no part in that. <laughs> How are you gonna tell me? How are you gonna tell me? Eddie, sing it. Eddie Mercury is insensitive. Eddie Mercury. Eddie shouts Mercury out. shouts out. Uh. I wanted to put a little bow on your Easter Island thing here. I, you yeah, know, do it. All this stuff happened, all and, and it was super interesting. By I, the way, I know it's Freddie Mercury. Before yeah, you leave a comment, yeah, what the fuck, I was dude. joking. Okay, have you ever heard of comedy? Ever heard of a joke? Uh, I just really love that in our modern era, there's a toy company called Figma. Uh, mm-hmm. They may, they mostly make anime figures. Yeah, but recently, they uh did a little deep dive. Uh, let me get this, get this pulled up here. They made a, a figure of uh, the Easter Island head. Uh, gave him a little anime body. Uh, I just think that's really, cre- really cute. Uh, they do like modern. They, they call can it like. I, what? Can I ruin this for everybody sure. watching? Uh, hey, Mega64 viewers. Uh huh. Go Strange away. Viewers. This is oh. the wrong podcast. But okay. Mega Strange viewers. Yeah, yeah. You're in the right place. I'm going to tell you why this statue is. They didn't want to scream as well. In- incredibly insensitive. <laughs> so, the statues on Easter Island are famous. The big yeah. giant people. But what is less famous, there is another set of statues on Easter Island carved out of wood. Uh huh. And it's the same people, but they're extremely skinny. Oh. And they think it's because that society collapse that I described. Yeah, yeah. When the famine hit the island. All of the people were so starved that the statues started to reflect their like famished bodies. So the fact that they're releasing this Maori, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, Moai Moai. statue, but it's a skinny version. I'm assuming they're totally unaware that there's already a skinny version that reflects the famine and the society collapse that hit the island. Uh, and they're just selling this as like he's posing. He's all yeah, sexy. He's all like, anime. Buy it. It's fun. It's anime. And it's like, I think, oh, yeah. no. I think this is this is just their stock body like that they have for figures. Oh, that's totally just a yeah. Figma body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it like it looks very similar to the emaciated statues <laughs> that are also from Easter Island that a oh, lot no. of that uh, a lot of people are not aware of. Well, Figma, you just got canceled. You just uh, Derek ruins everything. Sorry, Adam. Come for your job. Yeah. 
Uh, so that's Easter Island explained top to that's basically everything. That was awesome. Thank you for explaining all that. Well, what you have some videos for us. Oh, right. Do you want to go into it? Yeah, let's do a let's do at least one video. Uh, I wanted to get into the Halloween spirit. I know people, you know, like to come to us for, for Halloween content. OK, yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite things in Japan, I don't know if they did it recently. But there's an area in Japan where they do like a Halloween's not too big there. Right. But they do a little cosplay. Uh, Okay. Festival, and I, I just think it would be fun to just react to some right, of these. Japanese costume contest. Not that. That's the... Well, that costume is offensive. Oh, real quick, I could show you this. This is short. This is also in Japan. This is a, a, a cafe in Japan. Uh, this is a themed restaurant? Is it, Yeah, this is just a hole-in-the-wall yeah. cafe. Okay. Um, I turned the sound off because it's like some Twitch streamer. But uh, you get your coffee from a little monster hand. And they flip you off. Yeah, they flip you off. They tell you like you didn't get the things. I want to I want to go to Japan and find this. Like, I wonder if you have to order through an app or something and then you get a little handshake. Uh, that would be so popular in America. Right. I feel only in, we should like, make it. <laughs> that, w- that would work in San Diego. But yeah. I feel like there's parts of America where that would really just make people angry. <laughs> and, really? Like, the, the cafe would be under attack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People would like there would definitely be areas where people would like try to like get in the hole. Like they're trying to like uh, fuck get, with you get in the hole. Definitely. Yeah. I'm down for the monster hand coffee. Yeah, me too. Anyway, monster th- coffee. This is the festival here. I figured uh, there's like music and shit, so I figured we'd just react to it. Um, I love how uh, <laughs> they did the Jesus, the fucked up Jesus. All right, so I saw somebody being Van Gogh. Yeah. I feel like if I saw a French guy dressed as like a famous Japanese piece of art. Yeah. That'd be like a headline written about you it. You think so? <laughs> but we're going to let the Van Gogh. That's cool. Go, Dude, pumpkin Buddha. That's scary. A lot of Buddhas. Scary. Uh, that guy. You know what? It just occurred to me. I've never actually seen um, cosplayers from Japan. Yeah. I've, I've only seen American cosplayers. And uh, is it just me or is this better? Are They're they? definitely top tier. Right, never mind. Never yeah. Mind. No, Bert, not Bert that. Ernie. That's cool. Oh, hell yeah. My favorite. <laughs> That's Yo, cool. Fish people. I don't so, want. Yeah. Halloween in Japan just looks like your typical anime expo. Oh, 100%. Um, it's interesting because. I think when I think of cosplay, it's so much different from like Halloween costumes. Yeah. They're two different categories. And I wonder if in Japan that uh, distinction is less clear. Like, do they think of Halloween costumes as just an informal cosplay? Yes. I don't think Halloween is very big there. Um, I think it's starting to be because their universal Halloween Horror Nights was like terrifying this year. Yeah. But, uh. I love this shit. Like the the amount of work and effort, not that one, but this one, like that. But uh, I every year, this is like my Halloween tradition is to watch uh, this guy make super cuts. But he hasn't made one in a long time. This is from 2018, I think. Here's my opinion on Halloween costumes, yeah. by the way. Boomer take. And yeah. I are, I'm fully aware of this. So you feel free to cut me down if you disagree with me. Sure. A Halloween costume should be scary. Yeah. A Halloween costume should be scary. That's pretty scary. You're dressing up as stupid ass Krampus video game character (laughs) or like, a, oh, I'm the cheerleader from this cute Netflix show. Yeah. And you're just a cheerleader and you're not bloody or dead or undead or possessed by Beelzebub or something. If If you're solid snake, if you're Iron Man, hey, I know hot take. It's a bad Halloween costume. I mean, people Halloween, do that here, yeah. Halloween costume. People do it here. They do the cute costume or they do the not scary costume. Yeah. A Halloween costume is supposed to be scary. I agree. Or if not scary, at least do something that's of the horror culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I dressed up as a mummy one year and I wrapped myself up in toilet paper. Wasn't the scariest costume, but a mummy is like a classic monster. Yeah, it's classic. Halloween, we're supposed to be uh, scaring the ghosts. (laughs) We're supposed to be scaring them away. And if you think a ghost is going to be scared away by your uh, cardboard minions costume, you're doing Halloween Like this one? You're doing... Yeah! How? (laughs) I didn't even see the cardboard minions costume. I just knew that it was there. You knew it was coming up. I knew it was there. 
I know, I know. This is pretty terrifying. Boomers. The Gru is scary. Gru works. That's Minions, no. I'll leave it here. <laughs> People are gonna be like, Derek, what about sexy Halloween costumes? A lot. I'm not I'm not about the sexy call Halloween costumes either. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. I once saw a sexy Halloween costume that was a, a sexy squirrel. And I was like, why would you want to be a sexy squirrel? I guess furries, but Maybe you could argue that the sexy squirrel is scary because the life-size squirrel uh, arousing you could be some sort of uh, demon tricking yeah. you into like a sexual honeypot uh, possession <laughs> scheme. That is a little scary. But if it's just, you know, sexy costume, sexy costume. Eh, I mean, you do you. It was you, just like a leotard with a giant tail. Hey, listen, now I'm now I'm really getting people angry because they're like, what are you talking about? Derek? Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying on Halloween, your costume should be horrifying. I don't want to walk around popping boners everywhere I go. I'm looking to be scared. Okay. But that's just me. That's just uh, Derek Acosta's perfect Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, mean, it's I think not, you, it's oh. not everybody's Halloween. I'm not saying it has to be that way for everybody. Yeah. I, I think sometimes you could do funny costumes. I think funny costume is, is cool from time to time. I you mean, think of a good bit. I have done plenty of joke costumes. Yeah. You know what? Maybe this year I should eat my own heart out. I should eat my words. Maybe this year I should do a sexy costume. Yeah. For the first time ever. Finally wrap my head around the appeal of a sexy costume. Um, Don't knock it till you try it is what they say. What do you think? What do you think in the chat, in the comments? What should my Halloween costume be this year? Yeah, I'm trying to think of like things you're into. Sexy tarot card. Sexy Jason Voorhees. Yeah, that, that exists. Sexy Exorcist. Sexorcist. Sexorcist. I think that exists. Uh, the priest that pops a boner. That's kind of like the Sexorcist. Yeah. <laughs> they should uh, call it that. The Sexorcist. Yeah. It's probably a copyright. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be uh, this Halloween. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the opposite. I'm going to be like anti-sexy. You're going to be scary. Yeah, I'm going to be scary. You're going to be scary. Exactly. Nice. Well, I look forward to it. We'll we'll post pictures of our Halloween costumes on Instagram. So make sure you're following the Mega Strange Instagram at Mega Strange Podcast on Instagram and follow our Twitter at Mega Strange 666. Yes. We'll be back on Saturday with another episode and we'll be back in the middle of the week with a mailback episode. So be sure to follow us, like, subscribe, turn on notifications and share this episode with a friend. Help grow the Mega Strange army. Hell yeah. I'm Derek. That's Johnny. We'll see Bye. you next time. Goodbye.